What are the worst possible things you can do on a sailboat that lead to accidents, that lead to someone maybe getting hurt, or that lead to sinking? Or for the new sailors in the group, or people who are just trying to get a feel for it and get their feet wet, as it were, that might lead to a bad experience. This week on Everything You Need to Know, we're talking about the top five mistakes that we make on a sailboat. If you click this video, there's a good chance that you're new to sailing. So please actually stick around to the end. There's a very big piece of advice at the end that I think that you need to hear if you're one of those newer folks. Now, you guys know that I've made my fair share of mistakes on a sailboat. I tend to be one of those people that just has to learn the hard way. And trust me, I've made all five of these mistakes and sort of the bonus mistake at the end. The goals when we go out for a sail are pretty straightforward. Number one, safety. Number two, have fun. A lot of the time when we go out, we tend to take people with us to share in the sport that we love so much and get them to experience it. But these might be people who have never been on a boat, let alone a sailboat. Erring on the side of caution can be the most important thing that you can do on your boat with these sort of people that you're taking sailing. So without further ado, the top five mistakes that we can make, and we do make, on a sailboat. These are my thoughts, not yours. Now, I could easily start this list of top five mistakes with an easy one or an obvious one, but we're not going to do that because that would just be boring. Let's start with something you may not have considered. Too many captains or not enough captain. And let me explain. When you head out for a sail, it is by nature inherently dangerous. You're going out on the water with people whose lives are in your hands. Safety and oftentimes the lives of these people that are on your boat in your hands, you're the one controlling the boat. That's probably the first and foremost thing. And it's not just you steering the boat or calling out sail trim. Who's deciding which way the boat goes to the waves and the wind? Who's watching the charts and the depth sounder? Who's thinking 10 minutes ahead of the boat or three miles ahead of the boat the whole time to make sure that everybody stays safe? There's a very good reason that the Navy has a very rigid pecking order. It avoids accidents. One person must be in charge at all times, and that person should be the most capable person on board. They're responsible for everyone on the boat, for the boat itself, and for anything and anyone around the boat as it maneuvers. Having a strong captain and it clearly being outlined who that captain is, is a really, really important part of boating and not having too many captains. Often we head out for a sail with some of our sailing buddies who happen to have their own boats. They may even have more miles and more experience than we do. Before you set out, it's important to figure out which one of you is going to be calling the shots. Some captains can't help but to be in charge. In fact, I think that probably covers all of us, doesn't it? The best practice, if you're going to be a guest on someone else's boat, is to take a strict role of not in command. Commit to do what the captain says and only offer your opinions when they're asked for. Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to make this channel possible. A big shout out to this week's patrons. The newest ones, we got Tim and Laura, we got Keith from Australia, who just sent a couple of bucks, and of course, William, who I think is about to buy an Oceanus 45. I hope, William, I have my fingers crossed for you, maybe. Let's do it. Thank you guys so much for joining the team. All right, so the number two mistake after number one was uh, not enough captain or too many captains. Number two, and this one is going to be an obvious one, but I'm going to dig a little deeper into things you may not have thought of. It is safety gear. I mean, we all always have the right amount of life jackets on board, don't we? Safety gear isn't just life jackets, though. Depending on where you go, it might mean an EPIRB or a life raft or jack lines run from the front to the back of the boat so nobody falls off if they have to go up on deck in rough weather. Also, is the boat ready to reef at a moment's notice? And if you have a bunch of guests on board who don't know how to sail, who is going to help you reef? Is someone on board capable of maneuvering the boat should you become incapacitated? This is all part of the safety regimen. I usually like to have my son with me uh, if we take guests out who may not know how to sail. And while he was only 15 years old last season, I know that 
he is fully capable of getting the boat back to harbor safely if he has to. He may not be the greatest at that task, but he will get everyone home safe should, God forbid, something happen to me. All right, the third mistake, and this is one that we all overlook from time to time, no inspection of the boat ahead of time. I like to get to Lady K about a half an hour before any guests. A little more time would be even better. I want to check the bilges. I want to check the batteries, check the oil, warm the engine up, make sure the beer is cold. I also will do a rundown on deck, and I start at the bow and I work my way to the stern. Is the anchor secure, but also ready to deploy at a moment's notice in an emergency? I move aft and I sight up and down the mast from the side and the front to make sure it's tuned straight and true, with usually a little bit of an aft rake toward the top because we might be pointing, which we're always pointing. Am I wrong? From there, I'll grab a hold of the standing rigging to make sure all the tension is set right, and I'll check clevis pins and cotter pins. At least once a year, this process usually leads me to getting sidetracked on replacing cotter pins or polishing stainless as the guests sort of arrive, but it's all in the name of maintenance. From there, I move aft and I check the steering. Is it free and clear? And I check the backstay. Is it ready to go? I check the solar panels and I move from there aft to the dinghy, which I park right behind Lady K. So I'm going to untie the dinghy, get in, and I'm going to move it to somewhere to dock for the day so we don't have to tow it. I'll unhook the shore power if it's connected, which it kind of never is. Uh, and then I'll dig out the life jackets. With my pre-flight checks done, I have one more very important task, that, and you should definitely not overlook this. It's very important. The fourth biggest mistake is not setting expectations. If someone is new to sailing that's coming aboard for the sail, or I don't know their background, um, I go into my captain speech. Can you swim? Have you ever been on a boat, a sailboat? Uh, are you, how are you going to feel about the boat heeling over? And I think just about every time I have to give this speech to new people, I have to give them the we can't fall over speech. We can't tip over. There is a keel under the boat, thousands and thousands of pounds of steel or lead, uh, which stops us from falling over. Also, the more the boat heals, the less the wind will actually be knocking us over. You have to explain this to them. As we lean, the action of the wind on the sails is greatly reduced because it sort of rolls off the top of the sail. And as we stand up, there's more wind on the sail. If you do the hand motion thing, and explain it that way, it usually does a lot of good. Um, I do that whole hand diagram and it does seem to put people at ease. They understand the physics of how the sailboat works and they're less likely to freak out. So if the stuff hits the fan, which it very well could and let's say, just assume it probably will, you can't have someone being hysterical out on the water, one of your guests. So expectations for how the boat will behave and what to expect. Um, are we going to be taking waves over the side, waves over the bow? Are we going to get wet? Are, is it going to be dead calm? Is it going to be boring? Set the expectation ahead of time and make sure they have a good understanding of what's about to happen. Also give the seasickness speech ahead of time. You're not going to have time to do it later. You tell them, look, if you're feeling queasy, stay in the cockpit. Do not go downstairs because it will make it way worse. Stay in the cockpit, look at the horizon, all that kind of stuff. Okay, last one and number five, and honestly, this one I could talk about the most. The biggest, most detrimental mistake I see new sailors make as soon as they get their own boat. Honestly, within 10 minutes, they cannot wait to make this mistake. And at one time or another, I think we've all made it. Of course, we're talking about weather. New sailors all seem so gung-ho to get out there, get their boat out there, that they fail to respect the weather. The weather is the be-all and end-all of sailing, and nothing else matters. Weather would still be in charge if everything else was gone. It's the one thing you can't control and you don't have a say in. I can't tell you how many people I've personally gone out to rescue or watched the Coast Guard haul them in with their tail between their legs because of weather. First, the obvious thing that you should do. Check the damn weather. Check it the day before, the morning of, and before you actually set out that day. I like to check my local weather first. I get up in the morning, I have my coffee, I pop open the weather app, uh, or go on the internet and check the weather. Uh, is it going to be sunny? Is it going to rain? Is it going to be too cold or too hot? What's it going to be like out there, not from a boating perspective, just from a weather perspective? And then I like to think about who am I bringing with me? 
is it good sailing weather? Am I going to freak them out if the wind's too strong? Are we going swimming all day because there's no wind at all? And based on who is coming, do any of them need to be in the shade the whole time? Is anybody going to be particularly susceptible to the sun? So let's map out who's going to sit where. I want them under the bimini of the solar panels if, if that's the case. After I check weather, obviously I am going to check the wind. Now I personally like to use wind finder, but some folks seem to prefer windy or something else. When in doubt, check both or check all of them and average it out, right? Um, I also want to know wave height. I know that where I'm sailing this year is on the Great Lakes and we do get a predominant west wind. And unluckily, where I dock my boat, I to get out to sea, I have to head due west out of a channel for about a mile or so. How much bashing are we going to be doing into the waves? Anything below 15 knots of wind, I don't worry all that much about it. And once we're out there, are we going to head due north for a few hours on a beam and then turn around and head south for a few hours on a beam to come home? Or will the wind shift later that day? I cannot stress enough for new sailors that you must respect the weather. You will very quickly learn to hate sailing if you choose to go out when you have no business being out there. And further to that, you might see me going out and think, I have the same size boat as Tim, I should be safe. And that may not actually be the case. I have years and years of experience. My boat is set up for this kind of stuff. And I have a completely, I might have a completely different class of crew on board than what you have on board. My people might be experienced while yours aren't. You need to make your decisions based on your experience level and act accordingly. When in doubt, if you aren't sure whether or not you should be out there on your boat, jump on a more experienced boat that's about to head out. You can still get out there and have fun without all the risk. Also on that note, I completely refit my boat, Lady K. I know her weak points. I know where she's strongest. If you just bought your boat, you really do need to be more selective of what weather you're willing to put yourself into, what situations you're willing to put yourself into. Lastly, on the weather and having a good captain note, deciding not to go out because the weather is beyond your abilities is easy compared to the hardest decision I think a captain ever has to make. That's deciding when to call it and turn the boat around. Now, this is a really tough position to be in. Let's say you head out and you know you're right at the limit of what you know you and your boat can handle and things are okay for the first few miles then things change very quickly you can't get a reef in quick enough and you didn't have the foresight to reef ahead of time you're taking waves over the bow and the people on board are visually starting to get nervous you know it'll be okay because you know your boat and you know yourself but you're going to take a beating today so you start to weigh the options do you shore up the main, bring it center, and wait for a break in the waves to spin the boat around? Or do you press on? I mean, you're kind of committed now anyway. I've been in this situation countless times, and while I have decided to plow on, I have also had the courage to call it, turn the boat around and head back in. Bad situations go from bad to very bad to horrible in seconds, and I largely base my decision on who is on board the boat at the time. If we're beating into it and I'm just plowing on, let's say we were to snap a stay right in that moment. What will unfold next? What will the next 30 seconds or 60 seconds bring? Who is capable of helping me shore up the mast and get home safely? Who is going to lose their minds in the heat of it all? And also, who's going to freeze up and just be dead weight in the way? What if I suddenly see three feet of water in the cabin? And don't laugh at that because it does happen. That's it for this week, guys. If you enjoyed this episode or got some value in it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you're not already. I will see you guys next week. Bye.